What's happening guys? Kenny here again. And what I've got for you today is another hype versus reality. And the knife I'll be talking about is this guy. That's right guys, this is the Morph. This is the CKF uh, Custom Knife Factory Morph 4. Uh, they do have a Morph 5, which I believe uh, just has, it has like uh, contoured scales. I think they're milled with a certain pattern. It also has a ceramic uh, ball on the end of the clip. Uh, I'm not sure all the upgrades the, the Morph 5 have, but um, I'm not super familiar with it, but those are the ones I saw. Otherwise, it seems like a pretty similar design similar handle shape and everything. Uh, yeah. First off, I'd like to give a big shout out and thank you to Phil, uh, 70 Dodgeman is how you guys know him on uh, Instagram and I think even here on YouTube. But a uh, huge shout out and thank you to Phil because uh, this is actually Phil's knife and he was kind enough to not only send this knife to me, but pretty much give me free reign as far as uh, getting to test this thing to its full extent. Um, I've been able to carry it, uh, sharpen it a few times. Um, I did even get to do an, an edge retention test, which you guys know I'm not uh, normally, I don't do that. I don't actually, you know, like set it all up and do a test, but um, I did do it with this knife just to see how well this M390 did. I was curious. And um, yeah, so big thank you to Phil. Um, he kind of went above and beyond. He was just open and he, he's just been like, oh, don't worry about it. Don't, um, you don't need to get it back to me anytime soon. So he's just been really understanding, which is great. Uh, sorry about this smudge up here. You guys know I use this stuff, but, uh, yeah. So thank you so much, Phil. It was really awesome of so, you. Uh, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and do some size specs on the page. I don't like to waste you guys' time, so I'll go ahead and put those on the page here. Get that out of the way. Then I'll bring you guys back and go ahead and do some size comparisons. Uh, first things first. Um, as you guys saw in the specs, it's not a very small knife. <laughs> so um, it's, it's probably in that medium size or large for some people. First things first, I'm going to give you a good old fashioned rat one. This is the Ontario rat one. These are very large. I finally got one guys for size comparisons and stuff. And you guys can see that the rat is slightly larger than the morph. And then another the Emerson a 100. As you can see, that's also a larger knife than the than the morph, but just slightly about a quarter inch. Uh, next is going to be Benchmade. I'll go bring, bring in the full-size Griptilian with my aftermarket scales there. Uh, Griptilian's a slightly smaller knife. Or, eh, yeah, slightly smaller. Ever so slightly. Similar blade shapes, though. and I have blade uh, lengths and everything. Very similar. Actually, the Morph's got a little bit longer blade. Uh, next, I'll bring in some spider codes. I've got the Spidey Chef there. And I'll go ahead and bring in a Paramilitary 2. You guys see, I finally got a PM2 again. This is that uh, 10V uh, River's Edge Cutlery. PM2 is a very similar size knife. So is the Spidey Chef. Uh, Spidey Chef, I'm going to be bringing back in because you guys can pretty much see why I would be bringing that back in. But... Uh, Next, I'm going to bring in some uh, more expensive knives. I've got a XM18, 3.5 inch XM18, very similar size knife, a good size comparison, and then a full size uh, Sabenza. This is the large Sabenza, and you can see that's a little bit bigger for sure, about a quarter inch bigger overall. All right. Now that that's done, I'll get right into it. And yeah, I have i don't have a lot of experience with CKF. You guys know I did get another CKF a little while back. Uh, that was the Snack Tan 
model and I did enjoy using that. So I was excited to try another CKF. So uh, Phil was like, yeah, I'll send my morph to you. And that was really awesome of him. So uh, thank you so much. But as far as the morph goes, um, as far as my hype versus reality goes, you guys, if you never watched my channel before, uh, my hype versus reality is just my full review. This is a comprehensive review. If you guys are looking for a shortcut review, this is not that. Um, you can go look at my uh, first impressions and stuff. Those are a lot shorter. But my hype versus reality is going to entail the hype. Um, which is like created by either the community or sometimes distributors, sometimes just the, um, you know, like the, the manufacturer, the, the company that's uh, producing it. Everyone creates some sort of hype. And sometimes it's personal hype, hype that we create ourselves, whether it's a material we like, um, a company we like, or whatever it may be. So, and then I go into the reality, the actual, um, once I got it, uh, pocketed it, used it, um, sharpened it, then I give you my reality after usually months and months of using and carrying the knife. So uh, in saying that, uh, the, the hype on this, uh, I didn't have a whole lot of hype going into this, uh, at least for the morph. Uh, I didn't know a whole lot about this model before I got it. So it was it was really interesting for me to try. Uh, the the designer of this uh, knife, uh, his name is kind of uh, eluding me at the moment, but it's like Evg. So it's E-V-G, I think it's Evgary or something is his real name. Um, and uh, I forget the last name. I'll go ahead and put it on the screen right here. But um, seems like a really cool design. Very interesting shape to the knife. A very broad blade. Uh, I was ex really intrigued by the just the shape and design from afar. And then uh, I was intrigued at, at just be, by it being CKF. That was a lot of it. Custom Knife Factory, um, they're made in Russia. Uh, they seem to have a really good uh, fit and finish overall. Uh, the one I did handle was really well done. Uh, everything seemed to be really well done. The The build quality was really nice. And and then it, it comes with all the amenities. You end up coming, it comes with a nice uh, bag, like a, 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 pou a pouch, um, zippered pouch with like extra bearings and extra like spacers. They seem to come with a lot of extras, which is nice. And, um, and they seem to be just, you know, really trying to go above and beyond with build quality and um, attention to detail and uh, QC, you know, uh, quality control. Although I was intrigued to see how they did with their steel because that's an, something we don't get to see a lot of. And um, I, was, I was just definitely intrigued to try it out. Um, and then, you know, that's pretty much the, the hype. I didn't have a whole lot of hype on this knife. And then, of course, Phil just wanted me to check it out. So I said, you know, let's, let's do it. Phil didn't really give me a lot of hype to go with. Um, it, he, just, he just was like, check this out. So it was cool. And then uh, the reality, when I got it, in hand. It was extremely comfortable, guys. I, as soon as I took it out of the package, just looking it over, um, I'll go into the more of the fit and finish first. Uh, it's really well done. The, the stone wash on the handles, it's really just that plain titanium and the stone wash is done extremely well. I'm definitely going to hide a lot of scratches. It's almost like a stone wash and then a mirror. It's like a mirrored stone wash, or at least like a satin stone wash. It must come back and do some polishing after it. But it's very nicely done. And on the blade as well, really kind of just goes right into the blade. Almost the same stone wash. Which, uh, love it or hate it, you know, you could, you could definitely hate that there's no contrast between the handle and the blade. That's definitely a personal preference thing. Um, I don't mind it necessarily, but I would probably end up anodizing this handle. You know, uh, I don't know. Yeah, probably do something to, to get it to be a little bit more um, contrasting. But overall, uh, the fit and finish is done extremely well. Centering is dead on. Uh, the chamfering is done extremely well. Really no stone unturned. They've chamfered every edge, every sharp edge, or anything that could become sharp. 
the inside of the handle scales. So everything's very smooth, nothing to be that's objectionable. Even this spot here, it's uh, chamfered as well. I mean, the sharpest point is probably right on the edge, but it's really mild. Nothing, nothing bad. Uh, the jimping is done extremely well and chamfered. There's my smudge from cutting boxes down. Everything's chamfered extremely well. Even the back of the blade is chamfered lightly. So really well done. Very, very nice. Uh, and then, like I said, everything's fit. I mean, no, no movement at all. It's very well done. Uh, pivots cut cleanly, nicely, fits in there nice and flush. All the screws. Very well done. So, uh, as far as action goes, uh, you've been seeing me flip this already. Uh, there's definitely a nice crisp detent on this guy. And uh, there's no issue flipping this out in, in any way you'd like to. So, uh, light switch, which isn't necessarily how it's set up because there's, there is a little bit of jimping, I guess. So yeah, you can really just do this however you'd like. A little bit of jimping on top, but even more so, you see it's almost set up for a push button. And your finger lands right in that little cupped area right there, so it's really nice. Um, it's not like, it is chamfered a little bit, you see that, right on the edge. So, you don't even have the points right here to contend with when you flip. So, it's very comfortable. I never noticed anything as far as like, you know... Uh, as far as like flipping a lot, I never noticed anything that was objectionable or became an issue. So very comfortable. And then as you guys can see the, the dropping action, it's very free. It's not like a free, full free dropper, but it's damn close and very, very fun to fidget with if that's your thing. Easily you can do one swing as long as you give it enough. And um, like I said, uh, when you drop this down, where this point of contact is, you're already past the detent. Uh, detent's right here, and then you're on it, so you've got plenty of room there to drop it down, and you're never gonna get caught up on the uh, secondary clutch or anything, uh, detent. Very, very fun to fidget with. Very smooth. Very nice detent. See that suck in. So the action is really enjoyable. Very nice. I um, also like this aesthetic, guys. I like that design. Uh, it's not very functional as far as using it, but you can grip it. That's what I did find. Um, you can use those these like fullers or whatever you want to call it, these grooves in the blade. Uh, very easy to just grip them and open. Uh, one thing I would say that I thought was an interesting design, I don't know if this is a captured pivot. I never opened the knife. Uh, speaking of, this does, I believe, have a ceramic detent and ceramic uh, ball bearings. It does have ball bearings, but I believe they're ceramic. I never opened the knife and they don't specify on any of the, the sites, so I couldn't figure it out, but uh, I believe they're ceramic. It's very smooth, so it, I feel like they should be, but it's hard to say. Um, but one thing I'd say, I'm not sure if this is captured, but this, in my opinion, should be matching these. If this is a captured pivot, they had a miss here. Um, I, I don't think it is captured, but if it is, yeah, those should have been lined up with these. That would have been just a an extra nice touch there if they would have done that, but... Again, I'm not sure if it's captured. So if it if it isn't a D pivot, I would set that to match that. And it might have matched it at first and it's just over time started to work its way around. I can't remember, but I don't believe so. I believe it's always been that way. Um, anyways, moving along, um, as far as as far as the use goes, as far as actually putting this thing to use, 
Um, I did use this thing extensively. I got to put a lot of good work into it. Um, I got to carry it a lot of days, uh, thanks to Phil and his openness to letting me do that. Um, and in saying that, I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some footage of me using the knife on the screen here. And I'll go ahead and talk about this use. Uh, I really enjoyed using this knife. Um, when I got it from Phil, uh, I, you know, initially, just the, the first initial reaction was how nice and smooth and comfortable in hand it was. Uh, when I started to use it, I noticed that even with that extremely broad blade, which is nice, I love, uh, with the broad blade, you get easy cutting because that primary bevel isn't isn't coming to that behind the edge dimension at a at a fast rate. It's just a less abrupt descent to the secondary bevel, which, you know, is just gonna make an easier slicing. And I noticed this one felt pretty good in that dimension, but at the same time, the behind the edge thickness was thicker than I expected it to be. And it was a little disappointing because of how broad this blade is. They could have come very, very thin behind the edge. And um, it was a little disappointing. But in saying that, uh, the comfort of the handle made up for that, for sure. It, it definitely made it easy to put, you know, to squeeze hard and push hard through materials because of that comfort of the handle, which isn't exactly inherent. Um, you would think with some of the points, uh, I'll go over that more when I get to ergonomics, but you would think with some of the points on the back of the handle, it would be somewhat uh, offensive, you know, like you, you would get some hot spots, but but in fact, it, it was extremely comfortable. So I was very impressed by that. Um, because of all the chamfering as well, it was very, very comfortable. Uh, when the knife came to me, uh, Phil had kind of said something about he felt like the M390 might not be done very well or just be soft. And I did notice that in uh, use in my first edge and just putting some use to it, it, it did feel like it didn't stay as sticky or as sharp as it should have for as long as I thought it would have. But in saying that, it, it was it was okay. It didn't feel horrible, but it just, it's not what M390 you would expect, like what you would expect M390 to do. So in saying that, I kind of went back to Phil and I said, well, would you mind if I tested it? Uh, would you mind if I did a cut test? As you guys know, I don't really generally do cut tests, but I'm trying to do more of those just to um, maybe give another uh, data point and also uh, when I get the time it's nice to be able to compare it to what Steve and Gerald have got uh, so it was it was cool to try and do some cut tests this is one of the first knives I've done I did do another one which I'll be showing you guys eventually here but um, I will show you that footage as well after the footage of me using it in day to day and and you guys you guys will see I at first, I did feel like it felt soft. Um, after a few times of using it, it felt like it stropped back really well. So I said, you know, maybe it'll do better than I thought. And I asked Phil if he would mind. He said, hell no, like go ahead and do it, do what you gotta do. So I went ahead and cut tested it. And what I did get was pretty much what Gerald has found to be almost like average to low uh, M390 performance. Uh, at least in on the production level, because uh, this thing did 115 feet fine edge and 190 feet working edge, <laughs> which is, for you guys that know, that watch a lot of Gerald's uh, and um, Steve's testing, you'll know that that is not good. <laughs> That's really on par with some S30Vs, um, like Chris Reeves S35 will blow that out of the water. Um, there's a lot of things that will blow that out of the water. So it's kind of um, a little disappointing to see CKF not necessarily pushing M390 to where it needs to be. Uh, so, and I did do a, a test to confirm those results. And on the second test, I got 100 and... 18 feet fine edge and 187 feet working. So it did back it up and I was not impressed by those numbers. So uh, it was a bit of a bummer, but I think Phil was expecting it and it was, 
I mean, I, I didn't expect it, but I was bummed for Phil because it's just not ideal. We definitely want to see M390 doing better. But in saying that, um, the edge did feel really nice off the stones. Um, it took a nice, super like crisp edge. And um, it feels great now. I'll show you when I bring you back. Um, but the, the edge it took was nice and it's dropped back easily. So uh, it seems to be done well, maybe just at a too low of an HRC. So uh, yeah, and saying that, I think I will bring you back here and uh, we'll go more into the ergonomics of the knife. Uh, as you guys can see, this does have that like sway back, like kind of like that arched back. And as I said before, you can bring in the Spidey Chef because it's a very similar shape of the back of the handle. A little bit higher, not quite as low on the stance, but as you can see, that's a very similar back. So the way this works and the way it actually feels more comfortable than you think is it fits that curve of your hand. So where your hand kind of naturally curves down here as you bend it, see that how it curves? Um, the knife just fits so perfectly in that curve of your hand. And whether you're in that saber grip, which you can see is almost the most um, natural feeling, whether you're in that position or whether you go into hammer grip or pinch grip. Um, the pinch grip is actually the only one that I found some, some discomfort because of the point there. But honestly, I didn't notice it much because you can kind of place your hand right here and push and it was very comfortable. Uh, this handle was extremely comfortable. I, there is a little bit of finger grooves here. You got a, um, a finger choil here, and then you got a little bit of a groove here and then a little groove at the end, but everything is very subtle. So there's nothing that's gonna force your hand necessarily. And I think even if your, your fingers were, if your hands were smaller than mine and it landed right here, I don't think it'd be that objectionable. Um, my hands again are uh, three and three quarters inches broad and four inches tall and then from this point to this point is about six and a quarter to six and a half depending on you know where you measure to but yeah uh, I'm pretty much a large size glove latex glove and it's extremely comfortable in my hand in any grip so um, even a reverse grip well I mean reverse <laughs> reverse grip is is comfortable as well but even in a you know pull grip it's fairly comfortable. It's it's not as comfortable as some knives, but fairly comfortable. So really nice in use. I really enjoyed that. And um, if you guys have a Spidey Chef, you'll kind of know what the Morph would feel like in your hand. Very similar. Uh, although the Morph is a little bit uh, thicker in the handle, so it's actually even more hand filling than the Spidey Chef. Spidey Chef is a little thin, but still very comfortable, in my opinion, at least. But uh, moving along, um, yeah, uh, ergonomics were great. They were they were really well done. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the calipers right here, and we'll go ahead and get that uh, behind the edge dimension. This is at uh, it's at 16 degrees per side now. I did 15 degrees on the testing. I did, I did it the same way Gerald does, guys. I did uh, 15 degrees uh, 1500 to 1500 grit diamond, and then I uh, stropped to one micron. All right, so 21 thousandths behind the edge at the heel. So 19 at the belly. That's where it gets the thinnest for sure. So it does cut nicely through there. Back up to 23. So yeah, you can see it broadens back up. So it's not the most even secondary bevel. You can see it does get thinner around here. 
thicker here, but it still slices very well. I was um, I was impressed because of that broad blade. You get you get some nice slicing out of it. Really really enjoyed using it though. So as far as um, in the pocket, guys. Uh, oh, it was uh, very nice, very nice carry. You'll see that the clip comes up. Which, oh yeah, as far as the clip in, in the hand, it just disappears, guys. Absolutely disappears. Very, very well done clip. Very well done. But going in and out of the pocket, it's very nice as well. It's got a good amount of retention, yet still soft enough to get in and out. Fairly easy. Uh, really well done. There's not a whole lot of clearance, but it's enough, I found, for most of my pants and stuff. I didn't have any issues. Um, it lands on the the scale, so you're not dealing with the edge of the the cutout. Didn't notice any fighting there, so well done. And um, as far as weight goes, you guys already saw this in the specs, but uh, four point seven nine, so right around four point eight ounces. Which isn't amazing, but it's pretty good for a, a big, beefy um, titanium frame lock. You guys will see that there is some milling on the inside. This would probably be heavier if it wasn't for that. On both sides, you have some milling. Whew, there we go. So, that's nice. And it's not, I didn't notice it being necessarily heavy. Although to some people it'll be a little heavy. Um, it's definitely a little more handle heavy. Just a little bit, but pretty good. Pretty balanced. I uh, really enjoyed using this. Um, in, in conclusion, I think it's a great knife. I think that CKF has done a really good job. Uh, I think that it's definitely worth the money. I think these are right around $330, $320. I think it's well done. The only thing I would say is left, you know, unfinished or could be much better is, is the steel. It could be pushing that M390 much harder. And in this price range, you're kind of getting into the Riot range. And Riot does a really good job with their heat treat for the most part. So... Uh, that's the only thing I think that CKF's leaving on the table here. Otherwise, I think it's a, a well, well-made knife, and I think that you would be very happy with this knife, especially if you're not using it for like extensive amounts of cutting. If you're just using it for everyday EDC and you're not, you know, you're not working at, at a retail shop or something and cutting tons of, of cardboard, um, I think this would be fine for most people. Even if you do that, um, you're going to get through your day and then you just have to sharpen it or strop it daily, um, you know, depending on how much you cut. But otherwise, I think it was done pretty well. It seemed to have pretty good edge stability. There was nothing I noticed like chipping or anything like that. It, it seemed to be done well in that sense. Um, do I think it would get better through more sharpenings? Uh, possibly. But I didn't notice any significant difference with the first and second sharpening. And I know that Phil did his own sharpening as well. I believe so. Yeah, I I think it it probably just do right around there. Maybe a little better, but not much. So, yeah, I don't think there was any like fatigue steel necessarily. Although again, I don't know how many times uh, Phil sharpened it. So, uh, yeah. Overall, I think it's a well designed, well made knife. Uh, just the steel is the only thing I felt like was um, coming up short. Uh, in saying that, I do want to thank. And um, I want to thank Phil again. Thank you so much, Phil, for letting me get this thing in hand uh, and giving me the time that I needed because I've, been, I've had a lot going on right now, guys. Sorry for the, you know, the less content I've had lately, but I've been super busy and a lot of life changes going on right now. So I will be trying to get more out soon, but thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thank you, Phil, and uh, have a great day. I'll see you on the next one.